Three and a half years ago, the Ontario government appointed a task force to review how social assistance is delivered in this province. The result was an exhaustive report filled with nearly 100 recommendations on how to improve the system. Let's check in with one of the report's authors now to see how well or not the government has done. Here's Francis Lankin, who's co-chair of the Commission for the Review of Social Assistance in Ontario. And it's great to have you back here at TVO. Thanks, Steve. Just remind us, uh, give us some more detail on what your specific mission was when it was given to you three and a half years ago. Well, uh, the province had committed itself to a poverty reduction strategy, and as part of that, they understood that there was a lot of things in the sphere of social assistance that needed fixing. I mean, they heard from uh, recipients of social assistance that the system was broken. They heard from advocates. They heard from uh, municipal deliverers and First Nations deliverers, and everyone had something to say about how the system was failing the people of the province and failing the province in terms of uh, getting the expected outcomes from it. So we were asked to come in and take a comprehensive look. Uh, it wasn't a flash in the pan. It wasn't, you know, you've got six weeks, tell us what you think. It was a, an in-depth dive into the system and the minutia of the system, which is like a mind-boggling maze of rules and regulations layered on top of each other and all sorts of barriers to people succeeding in, in getting their lives back together and getting off of social assistance. So, you know, we did that. We spent a lot of time out talking to people. We spent a lot of time looking at the existing program, a lot of time looking at uh, literature reviews and research of other jurisdictions, and, you know, a lot of time considering what was what was doable in the context of uh, a minority government and fiscal constraint. And those things have all, you know, come to pass as we were doing our work. So. Uh, that was the job. Uh, we spent just under two years um, doing, doing the work and produced a report. As you said, there was uh, close to 100 recommendations. Some of them about the minutia and the rules. Some of them about fundamentally restructuring the program and the, the way in which uh, social assistance rates are determined. A lot to do with employment and creating better bridges and opportunities for people, and some recommendations that lay outside of social assistance system altogether, because this is a system that is a system of last resort. And the more you can shore up the other supports in society and the other opportunities for people, the less you have to rely on people falling through the cracks onto social assistance. Okay, before we focus on that, let's just, mm -hmm. yeah, you having been a former cabinet minister in the early 1990s in this province, would presumably know how a system which presumably was built to help people, yeah. gets so bloody complex. How and why does that happen? Well, some of it has to do with the process of politics itself. You can have a very good public policy intent, um, but perceptions, public perceptions and political perceptions, and sometimes one's, one feels the other, um, can lead people to believe that it's unfair, or in this case it's too easy to get onto welfare, or people are abusing welfare, so more rules get put in place. You get a scandal of some sort, uh, you know, somebody uh, bilks the system, and everybody has to pay for it with new regulations and tighter rules and tighter scrutiny. Um, you have well-intentioned uh, public policy interventions. And I've always said that public policy is kind of like a balloon, you know. If you, if you poke it here, it pops out over there. So there are unintended consequences to some very well-intentioned int well changes that were made. And because it's um, an, dealing with a population that's vulnerable and marginal and whose voice is not heard and their own experience uh, is not, you know, validated by public policy makers often, we spend a lot of time trying to do that in, in, in our process, uh, it often also becomes a political football. Um, mm. These voices aren't strong, they're not heard, and uh, you can say things about them and do things to them with very little consequence in the general, in the general public. And I think all of those things come together to make this a, a morass uh, of uh, public policy problems that we tried to delve into and tried to set a course for the future. Well, let's look at the two chief programs here. We've got Ontario Works mm -hmm. and the Ontario Disability Support Program. Mm -hmm. And you... And Munir Sheikh, your co-chair and your wisdom, decided yeah. that these two programs ought to be merged, focusing on ability, not disability. Right. When you made that recommendation, what was the reaction from the communities affected? There was a lot of fear from uh, people in the community of disabled persons, and I understand that. Um, their fear was that municipalities have been charged with uh, running Ontario Works, and at a point in time where it was a very punitive, uh, restricted program, and that, that mentality would invade supports for persons with disabilities. And so they resist that. And the government has had to deal with that and has not been able to work through with um, 
with the disability community a way forward that included that recommendation. Well, they went further. They just said they thumbs said, down. They said, they said no. We're not going to do it. Well, at a certain point in time, if if it, you know you're not going to get anywhere, and it stops you from doing other reforms, you you, you know you have to. Did you get a heads up on that? I did. The they day before they announced, they called and and uh, and told me. I guess they didn't want me to be surprised and disappointed. Just disappointed. So you were but, disappointed. Well, yeah, I'm disappointed, but um, Steve, I understand. You know the the community. We, we always said, these are our best recommendations. And by the way, they're a package. They hang together as a package. That, let me tell you, the reason behind that recommendation was people with disabilities are in a system now where there are fewer caseworkers. They're not getting the kind of supports they need to help them build a plan to, you know, to enable them to do as much as they can in terms of employment or education opportunities. Um, there are, are fewer offices. It's less accessible uh, to them. And the, the focus is on their disability, not on their ability. And it's the fastest growing um, you know, part of the social assistance system. Municipalities have much tighter ties to employment markets and those opportunities. And there's a cost-saving opportunity for streamlining administration. That was secondary to our reasoning, but it did possibly free up some money to put towards some of the other reforms. So it hang, hangs together. But you know, I, I understand that's not happening. What was important about that was the focus on employment and ability, and the, uh, the focus on, on better access and better services. So while the government said, OK, we're not going to merge them, we'll take that off the minds of the disability community. They were really worried about it. But we are going to work to try and get better supports in place for employment. And they're working with Employment Ontario to try and change the work that it's doing. Maybe they'll get to the same end point. Maybe they won't. So um, you know, like our job is to give advice. It's not to do all of the balancing that government has to do and to work with the community to actually chart the course forward. And one of our recommendations was, bring the community together and get buy-in to this whole set of recommendations. And, so you know. they didn't go for that recommendation, but there yeah. were, as we pointed out, almost 100 others. Yes. Do you, anybody done a checklist to see which ones they've done so far and which ones they haven't? Uh, yeah, I don't know that I, I, am, um, I have the whole list, because some of these things are, are quite internal to the, um, the administrative operations. Mm -hmm. But uh, for example, they um, have increased the uh, Ontario Child Benefit, which was a key recommendation. They've announced a further increase and an indexing. And that's a really critical uh, poverty reduction um, strategy and announcement. And it's part of easing on the social assistance uh, side of things as well. They have um, eliminated some of the overlap and duplicative and restrictive rules, so around retaining of assets before you qualify for social assistance. Some of the uh, ways in which First Nations and Northern remote communities administer the program to you know, recognize their uh, unique responsibilities. When they did the social assistance increase, they did a targeted uh, additional increase to uh, the single employables on, on Ontario uh, works. And that was an important recommendation. It didn't go as far as high as much as we recommended that they do. Um, I'll look to see in this budget if they do another targeted increase to try and close that gap and bring that lowest rate up. That's all really important. They've um, implemented uh, an increase in minimum wage and started to look at the benefit structure outside of social assistance. So the pension announcement is one of the most critically important announcements, I think, in terms of changing the the world of working people and the working poor and benefits and creating more opportunities for people to leave social assistance and have some, some um, security and resiliency in the future. A lot of things haven't been done yet. And, what's, the, um, what's the big one you wished had been done at this point? Uh, I hope they're working on this. I, uh, I wouldn't have expected it to come before this year, but we made a series of recommendations about restructuring the, um, the way rates get set and creating a, an understanding of what a basic measure of adequacy is against market basket costs in different parts of the, um, of the province, and getting it out of the political football world, right? Having a, a methodology that you can apply, and it has to relate to um, a sound methodology for minimum wage as well. They've got things in place where they're studying this and moving this forward, I hope. Mm -hmm. They've not announced anything on it, and I'm not aware of anything coming uh, forward on that, I hope I'm surprised. The other thing that I would say is critically important, so there's two things, that and moving ahead, accelerating a strategy on mental health supports and services for adults. Um, they have done a lot around children's mental health. 
the fastest growing category of people in social assistance are people with mental health challenges mm -hmm. and they're adults and we have to do something about this because there's a whole part of our community that's just getting you know thrown onto a, a, a garbage heap and left behind and I really really worry about that so that's a, a critical piece as well. I wonder though if and again we hearken back to the time when you were in government uh, 20 plus years ago during the last Great Recession, you discovered, I guess at that time, that there's really not a hell of a lot of progress you can make on poverty issues when the deficit is going through the stratosphere. And they're having the same issue today. Is that a lesson that one simply has to draw from times like these? Um, well, when you say not a heck of a lot of progress, uh, you know, there, there isn't a lot of money to uh, increase the supports to people, but um, there are choices to be made. So looking at, at a provincial pension plan, for example, and, and talking about it in the context that um, this is investment today that will save money from when this next generation of seniors ends up um, without economic security and relying on social supports is, is a really important shift and important to, to move forward. They've chosen to do that against some other you know, priorities. It would be nice if all could be done, but that's not the reality in tough fiscal times. Some of the restructuring pieces could be done, and they've started, there's more to do, and you know, I hope that the community's holding you know, people's feet to the fire to get that done. They did announce five years ago a so-called poverty reduction strategy. Mm -hmm. How well do you think they've done at it? Uh, I think not as well as they would have liked, but with respect to children in poverty, um, actually uh, very you know, um, important progress with the Ontario Child Benefit and the impact that it's had. Uh, again, I think advocates would like to see more faster, mm -hmm. but they've committed to two more increases and, uh, and the last of, of those being um, tied to inflation. So it's inflation protected for the future. Mm -hmm. I think that that's really important. And my understanding uh, uh, is that they've said they are bringing forward the next five year strategy or next strategy, I don't know for how many years, mm -hmm. but um, phase two of the strategy. So that will be interesting to see what all is included in that. It's uh, been a long time um, in the province since there's been a government prepared to commit to uh, reducing poverty. Um, you know, I think that uh, I was part of a government that tried to do some of that, and I'm pleased to see that still remaining on the agenda now. You still think it's as powerfully on the agenda today as it was when they made the promise in 2007? Uh, in some ministers' minds, I think it is the top of mind priority for them. Um, for the Premier, I think she puts it right beside the prosperity and, and jobs, and um, that's important. You can't, you can't do one without the other, and you have to do you know, the strong social safety net and community health and all of that to be able to do the jobs and prosperity. I guess uh, you know, maybe it is with the experience of having been in government and the years intervening that I recognize uh, you know, in a fiscal constraint period, choices are, are made. And um, I think in the minority government, choices are made. And so far, the NDP and the Liberals have, uh, on some issues, agreed that these are important things to move forward. And so um, I think maybe that's, that's uh, an okay outcome at this point in time, and I hope for more. I hope that doesn't sound too wishy-washy, but it is really the reality of what can be done in I'm, these if, circumstances. If you thought that was wishy-washy, I'm going to give you a chance to be way more wishy-washy. Because <laughs> I am going to, you yeah. know, you, you, you were a New Democrat cabinet minister. Yes, and the I new am a New Democrat. You are still a New Democrat. I am. How well do you think your party has been doing lately at championing the social justice concerns that presumably got you into the party in the first place? Um, Again, I'm going to uh, yeah, I'm going to be with you again. <laughs> again, I'm going to say that in um, in a you know a minority government where um, there's moments of time where there's opportunity to make progress on some things, um, I would like to see them grab those opportunities. So, uh, on the pension front, um, you know that's something that it was I think back in in 2010 and many times before that from the party a key policy priority. There's an opportunity to make that happen. That, I'm sure, is weighing on Andrea's mind as she considers what she's going to do uh, post-budget. Uh, and I think there are some other things there that she would, she would very much support. I think what she is doing, though, is not getting herself way out on advocating those and, and putting herself in, a herself in a box in terms of having to support the budget because it's got the list of things that she demanded, which is what happened last year. Um, she's left herself free to make a decision 
It's a pretty important decision, and I think that there are divided opinions in that caucus as there are in the party. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, my friends and I have conversations about this, and a lot of emails back and forth. What's your opinion? What my, my opinion is that um, you know, today with on the agenda uh, potential for investment in public transit, in roads and highways in the rest of the province, public transit in the GTA, youth employment in a jobs and prosperity. Uh, you know, a desire to stop the decline of uh, low-skill, low-wage society and a generational reform in pensions, in public pensions, um, that there's enough there to support. Now, I'm not inside at those discussions and I don't know all the things that are being weighed back and forth uh, in the considerations. Uh, but you so have to have concluded that the Liberals have not lost their moral authority to govern if you say you could support a budget with those things in it. That's right. That's, uh, that's what I have concluded. Mm -hmm. Now, I've not been at the table looking at the, um, you know, the uh, gas plant uh, issues, right. right? I only see what I read in the media. So I'm very hesitant always um, from outside to want to impose an opinion on this. I remember what that felt like when I was there at the table and people just didn't understand everything that we were <laughs> dealing with. Um, but uh, I like those things that I, I listed off as important initiatives. They are part of the social justice agenda that I have supported for a number of years. And uh, we're seeing them on the table in tough economic times, and that sort of surprises me. And I'd like to see them supported. I kind of hate to ask you this with only 30 seconds to go, but I do <laughs> want to get your view on it anyway. Yeah. There is a sentiment out there that the poor have always been among us and always will be. And there's not that much we can do about it. What's your view on that? Uh, I believe that, um, that poverty is relative and that there is a possibility of sharing of the assets and wealth of a, of a society in a way that um, helps people seize opportunities and realize opportunities in a way that protects them when they can't. And uh, we can do a lot better job than we're doing today. 30 seconds, that's, that's what I would say. That's what you can say. Yeah. Francis Lankin, it's really good of you to come in tonight. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.